welcome back to Jocelyn's Art Corner and today I have with me a very special guest. His name is Jose Villarreal and he's a professional guitarist and um, we're going to be talking with him today. So I want to introduce our guest. He, like I said, is a professional musician and he has worked with different live bands and projects including Grammy winning Los Angeles Guitar Quartet and he's performed at the world premiere of Austin Pictures with the Miro String Quartet at Austin City Limits. He's also performed a two-night sold-out concert with Argentinian rock band Los Enanitos Verdes in McAllen, Texas. He's taken master classes with various artists, including uh, Los Angeles Guitar Quartet member William Kennengeiser and guitar wizard Steve Vai. Jose graduated from the former University of Texas at Brownsville with a Bachelor in Classical Guitar Education and a Master's Degree in Contemporary Music Performance from Berklee College of Music in Valencia, Spain. In 2015, he transcribed the album En Vivo by Los, An Los Enanitos Verdes and is currently working closely with the band to have it published. He's currently teaching in Brownsville, Texas and performs live throughout the valley with various bands and artists. I mean, that's really thank awesome you so much. that you've thank done you. that. And um, thank you so much for taking the time, uh, for, with, sure. you know, for being here today. Thank you. And so, yeah, Jose, just, let's just talk about, uh, just briefly a little bit about your background, where were you born and raised? For sure. Uh, well, I was, I was born in Matamoros. Um, I was, we lived there till I was around seven, eight years old. And then uh, we moved over here to Brownsville and I've pretty much been here ever since. We moved to San Antonio for a little bit, for about a year, but we came back because, I mean, my whole family's here. So yeah. we kind of, we got homesick a lot. Yeah. And then uh, I went off to school for a year or two. I went off to Spain, but I came back here. I always seem to come back home. So this has always been home to you? Pretty much, yeah. So you said you've been here since around eight years old? Eight years old, That's more nice. seven, eight, around there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And so what about your musical background? I mean, I've heard you perform live and yeah. you're an awesome guitarist. And I mean, I'm so curious as to how you started uh, playing guitar, what, you know, what sparked that interest, um, how old were you, like, for you sure, know, for sure. How, how did this begin? I started kind of late. Most people start um, really young, like I have a friend that I was rehearsing with yesterday and he started when he was three years old. I mean, when oh. I was three years old, that was like, I, I, I don't remember know. what I was doing. I don't even remember what I was doing at three, yeah. So I started, I guess, kind of late. I started, I was 14 and I was a freshman in high school. And I was really lucky because uh, my last period, it, I think it was eight periods in high school, mm -hmm. my uh, biology teacher, she's, she's married, she's an awesome lady, shout out to Ms. Valdez. Um, she was mar she's married to um, Dave Valdez, who used to own Hermes Music. Okay. And yeah. he's a killer guitar player, awesome mm -hmm. guy. His sons, two other musicians, awesome. And so um, I remember coming back from the Christmas break in like around January. And this girl that was in our class, she had got a guitar for Christmas and Ms. Valdez and she was, you know, into music and stuff. Mm -hmm. She would like sometimes let us jam out for a bit, like the last, I don't know, five, ten minutes of class. It was the last class of the day. She's into music. She'd be like, all right, I'll let you guys play for a little bit. So this girl, she took her electric guitar and she was, she, she didn't really know how to play that much. She had just gotten it, of course. Right. Um, everybody, you know, was just learning. But there was another friend of mine whom I knew since elementary school, and he could really play. I mean, he, he really knew what he was doing. Mm -hmm. He had a unique style. He didn't play with a pick. It was electric guitar. He played with his fingers. Mm -hmm. and, but I remember everything that, that we would, like, uh, ask him to play like hey can you play I don't know the Eagles can you play Zeppelin can yeah. you play this he was like yeah sure okay. and he would just do it and it was just like oh. wow <laughs> like to see somebody do that in the yeah. and I'd never seen anybody do that yeah and so it was just I think I guess it was that I remember I went home and I I, I told my dad hey my cousin has a guitar he never uses it can, you think we can borrow it so we went over to his house he lives he lived at the time like a couple of blocks away mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, man, take it. And I still have that guitar. Oh, wow. I still have it. It's a horrible guitar that like, nobody should ever play. <laughs> it's like super hard to press on the string. Was it one of those Squire Fender No, Squire? I wish it was a Fender It was like, where is it? Where one of those that you buy like a Dang. piano or something. It oh, was like wow. a horrible guitar. It, was, it hardly was ever in tune, but whatever. It sounded mm -hmm. okay. And then, um, so I got that. And I, I remember my dad knows how to play a little bit. 
he plays mm -hmm. all by ear. He's really good, but yeah. he, he doesn't know how to read music or anything, but he has a really good ear. He plays piano and he plays drums would be his main thing, but he knows a little bit of guitar. Mm -hmm. And I told him I really wanted to learn Hope of California. That intro was just like oh, the most beautiful mm -hmm. thing. Even to this day, I love it. Um, and he, he kind of knew how to play it, more or less. And so he wrote down um, the chords on this piece of paper. I remember it was like a red sheet of paper. He just tore it in half and he drew the chord diagrams. Mm -hmm. And um, I, for like three months, I would just kind of just play those three songs over and over. It was Hope to California. Mm -hmm. I think it was Stay Away to Heaven and Dust in the Wind, right, by Candace. Oh, I love that song. I love Beautiful it. Beautiful song. I know, I know, yes. I know. So I would just play those three songs over and over and over and mm -hmm. over. And and that's just kind of how it got started. Yeah. And then I would just work on it and work on it and work on it. And then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. ta-da. It wasn't all of a sudden. It was over a course of yeah, you know, days of or course. weeks or whatever. But mm -hmm. it just gave me a lot of confidence, you know. And at that time, when you're in high school, I, I don't know. There's a lot of, you know, really, you're trying to find out who you are and mm -hmm. all these things. And so I was very lucky that I that I found that. That's yeah. very cool. Yeah. And I kind of expected to hear you say, oh, I started playing like when I was. I don't know, six years old. Or I wish. I also thought about Jimi Hendrix. When he first started playing, he was playing on like this rinky dink guitar. I think he yeah. had like one string. And he was just like going crazy yeah. on the blues, you know? So, and he did it. And, and now he's a legend as well. So, you yeah. know. He, yeah, yeah. I think, and it's probably your parents when you're growing up, it's like, oh, I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a police officer. <laughs> oh, now you want to play guitar. All right. So you, they're not going to go out and buy you, you know thousand dollar guitar or whatever it's like let's see if you like it first yeah and then if you do well then maybe we'll upgrade something but yeah I I um I was lucky that I, I found that at relatively you know young not, not too old not too young but right. that I found that in high school and that I I guess that I stuck with it yeah yeah that's amazing that like any any feeling if if you ever felt discouraged like that was you know overshadowed by like just your desire to you for know sure. to wanting to grow and get better and learn all these things yeah, yeah for sure yeah there yeah. was never i can't i can't think of a time that i said oh this is too hard actually no that's not true there was once it wasn't guitar though it was later much later when i was in college i, I wanted to study music and uh, my parents were kind of reluctant about that you know I mean none of them no one in my family is a musician or anything mm -hmm. so understandably they were just kind of concerned about it but I finally started studying music and it's not just guitar you know you have to do you have to you have to take a piano you have to test you have to take I think it's called the piano proficiency exam mm -hmm. and I was like all right it's nothing too crazy but you also have to sing oh, okay. and for me that was like yeah. oh my god so I remember talking to one of my teachers um, and I asked her, I was like, man, I just want to play guitar. And she's like, no, everybody sings oh, here. <laughs> and I was like, oh, and I remember, I remember I had a conversation with my mom. I was like, oh, dude, I don't know, because I failed. I remember I had the, the, our first oh, test. It was a sightseeing test, and I got mm -hmm. like a 60 or something. And I was like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? And, and then I started taking, um, I had to take, what do you call it, like, I guess tutorials. Mm -hmm. You know, for failing, if you fail the test, you have to take tutorials yeah, for it. Like remedial courses. Yeah. yeah. So I have to do that. And, um, yeah, just it's just like guitar. You just have to work on it. Mm -hmm. That's a misconception that I, I know I had. I thought singers were just, you know, naturally gifted and they can just yeah. sing or whatever. But it's, it's like an instrument, your voice. Yeah. You have to practice it. You have to constantly work at it. I sing. I mean, I've been singing I, yeah. since the fifth grade. Mm -hmm. um, I started in choir and then I just, you know stuck with it mm -hmm. I was in band for like two weeks played French horn but I'm like no I want to be in choir I want to keep singing yeah <laughs> you know what I mean I think if the desire is strong enough um, it's important to just keep pushing yourself for you sure. know but then you also yes you have to keep it's it's an instrument you have to work at it it's not like you know one day I just woke up singing opera or exactly. whatever <laughs> you know what I mean no for sure yeah you have to work on it yeah for sure so so then at what point did, was it straight out of high school that you decided like, you know, this music, playing guitar is something that I want to do seriously or I want this to be my career? At what point did that happen? Mm -hmm. um, it was pretty quick. Yeah. So I had been playing for three months and I, uh, I went to my grandma's house and my uncle was there mm -hmm. in Matamoros and uh, Enanitos Verdes were going to play in Matamoros. 
and he asked me, do you, he knew the owner of the club, and he was like, do you want to go? And I was like, uh, I don't really want to go. I, I, had, I had only heard one of their songs. Right. And at that time, I feel like when you're first starting to play, your musical world is just very limited. You don't know about all these things. You just, yeah. I just kind of knew Eagles, Led Zeppelin, and just, that's it. ACDC right. is just very limited. Yeah. There's so much out there, right? Right. So I had only heard one of their songs, and it was kind of like a pop song, and it, it didn't really have a lot of guitar in it. And I thought it was super cool with my three guitar songs. <laughs> and um, and he told me he's like, no, it's gonna be cool. Let's go. Um, you, I can get tickets for your parents, and, mm -hmm. and some of my cousins were going to go, and some of my friends from high school were going to go. And I was like, all right, whatever, I'll go. And I went, and it was just, like, magical. Like, I, I don't know, I, I remember everything about that. I remember the smell, I remember what I was wearing, I remember what my hair looked like. It was just one yeah. of those nights that I wish I could relive, because I, I, I didn't have any expectations, and I get there, and then the lights go down, and this, the guitar player comes out, and he's just shredding. I mean, I had never seen, up to this that point, I had never seen anybody play like that. I didn't know mm -hmm. the guitar could sound like that. He was, like, doing all these crazy things with the whammy bar. And, and mind you, electric guitar. I had an acoustic. I had never really mm -hmm. played with an electric. I mean, that girl had an electric guitar, the one I was telling you about right. in high school. But she didn't really have it plugged into an amp or have mm -hmm. a whammy bar. It's just so very simple. At this point, you had no idea what the electric guitar yeah. was capable of. Exactly. Right. Sonically, I was just right. like, "What? How did he do?" It's like yes. like watching a magician. Like, yes. how do they do it? You know, I had no idea. Now I kind of know the tricks, but at the time, it was like he was doing all this stuff with his his picking hand, his tapping technique. He would have it over here, and he was mm -hmm. all these crazy sounds, and it was just like. <laughs> Oh my god, so after that, even my mom, after the concert, she was like, did you see that guy? He was just doing whatever he wanted with the guitar, and I was like, mm -hmm. yeah. So that was one um, turning point where mm -hmm. I was like, I really want to figure that out. I want to know what he's doing. I want to, I want to do that for myself. And then the other one was, uh, I went to Vegas when I was around 17 for New Year's uh, mm -hmm. with my whole family. We all went, and um, Van Halen was playing Oh wow! at the MGM Grand. And um, that was my Christmas present. That's so cool. To go watch them. And then uh, I took my guitar because I would take my guitar everywhere. And um, I remember after I saw that, um, I, I, w I was just in the room practicing. And I just I had some shows when I, when I came back to Brownsville. I had some shows lined up. And I just really wanted to, I don't know, I just felt really inspired after that. And then, um, I don't know, I saw my professor in high school. And I was like, you know, I can't. He, he would teach and then he would gig and, and I was like, I can do that, you know, okay. I can kind of, I can do that, I know I can do it. And so that's kind of how, right. those two, I I remember those two memories very vividly, mm -hmm. that afterwards I was like, yeah, I want to do this. Right, yeah. so that moment, that concert, yeah. or just seeing, uh, seeing someone, uh, you know, your, your high school teacher doing it and that kind of, you know, like, hey, I could do it like this is something that you know it, it it's possible. possible yes for sure so that opened that door for you definitely that's yeah that's amazing so uh, what about musical influences I mean you've mm -hmm. talked a little bit about the Eagles and you know mm -hmm. like classic rock you know but what what other musicians have inspired you oh along God. the way do you mind if I look through my phone of through course. my iTunes Go ahead. I have so many there's so many great artists out there, even uh, people that don't even necessarily play guitar, I just like mm -hmm. good music. Right. Um, like here, Al Green, he's not really a Al guitar player, I love Al Green. Mm -hmm. Of course ACDC, Alice in Chains, uh, America, Audio Slave, um, ABBA, yes I like ABBA, whatever. <laughs> the Beatles of course, Yeah. Sabbath, and yeah generally I guess I, I tend to go more to guitar players, even trio music like Los Panchos and stuff yes, like that. They it's have stuff, the most beautiful music in the world. <laughs> I tell friends that you know when we listen to this, they're like, "This stuff is metal." Like, yeah, they're <laughs> they're shredders. Yes, Those guys are shredders. Yes. Yeah, it's cool. It's like, yeah. So, yeah, I can see how all these different artists would inspire mm -hmm. your playing. For so, sure. what what has been what has been a like a particularly memorable experience for you like you know once you started doing this professionally like can you talk about any of the experiences you've had performing yeah um one thing that really helped me a lot was so when i was in high school my senior year i started playing um 
in, in, in a band here locally, um, a bunch of older, older guys that were like in their forties. And I remember I was at guitar center one day just jamming and the manager came up to me and he said he had a friend that was looking for a guitar player. And so I gave him my, my number. I didn't really think anything of it. And I got a call and then they gave me a list of songs and they were kind of challenging songs on guitar. And when we would, so we rehearsed and it went well, but when we would start performing, um, it was hit or miss. I remember sometimes I would get the songs down, other times I would just butcher it, and it was just like, man, it was really started to kind of upset me, kind of mm-hmm. pissed me off. <laughs> so I remember um, it was after, after I saw that Van Halen, Van Halen I, um, mm-hmm. I started working with, with a metronome. Okay. And I started working on those little parts of songs that would always give me trouble. The passages. Yeah, the pat- musical passages. Mm-hmm. And it worked. Yeah. It worked. I remember when we would play them, and I remember it was funny because I would mess them up when the nights where I would mess them up. I had a friend who I love to this day, but he would he would laugh at me on stage and be like, "Ah, how do you mess it up?" But then after that, it was like, I got it now. And it's, you need people like that to push you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. And um, um, uh, so yeah, that that was after that. I remember we had a show in McAllen. I had been working with the metronome for a while, mm-hmm. and uh, we had a show in McAllen. It was just awesome. It just felt so good, and I was like, "Yeah, this this is working, you know." Yeah. Um. So that that was something that's very memorable, for sure. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like those concerts, like I said, the that show in Matamoros and the Vegas concert, a lot. I've had a lot of really cool um, musical experiences. You know, I want to point something out though. Everything came full circle for you because you saw Anitos Verdes. Yeah. And then you've played with them as well yeah so how did that come about that was cool um that was probably the coolest musical experience that i had um how did that come about grad school i was in grad school and for my they called it culminating experience Mm -hmm. which is kind of like your what is it called Uh, not your dissertation because that's for a doctorate your thesis okay right for a master's it's a thesis i think but over there they called it culminating experience Mm -hmm. So I was just kind of thinking about like, man, what can I do um, for my culminating experience? And because kind of going back to when I first saw them, Mm -hmm. I went home and I started, I looked up their music because I wanted to learn it. And to my surprise, it just wasn't available. I don't know why Mm -hmm. nobody had transcribed that music. It was so, I mean, we listened to it, to the guitar parts. It's very incredible. The Mm -hmm. stuff that this guy's doing is just awesome. So I kind of took it upon myself to try and learn it. And over the years, um, slowly, I started um, transcribing it. And then for when I was in grad school, I was like, why don't I just do the whole album and put it out there for somebody, maybe like me, who listened to them and, and wants to learn this music. Right. So that's what I did. I transcribed the album and the guitar part, the vocals, the keyboards, the mariachi, the wow, flute. everything, not just the guitar. No, I didn't do the bass. I should have done that. Okay. That's the only thing I didn't do. Mm-hmm. But it, it's... For the most part, since he sings, the mm-hmm. bass player, it, it's nothing too crazy. It's pretty much just like the root and the fifth or whatever. Right. Um, but I, sh- I still should have done that. But anyway, so I did that, and then I had a, a really cool professor who I just talked to yesterday. Um, he's going to be playing in Monterrey in November. Victor Mendoza, shout out. He's a really good uh, percussion percussionist. But anyway... Um, so he told me, hey, I'm going to go to Argentina mm-hmm. to some, because that's where they're from, to some fe- some festival. Give me a copy of your book and see if I can get it to them. And I was like, sure. And uh, I didn't really think, I don't know, I didn't really think anything of it also. I just, I gave it to him and, and uh, I, just, I just wanted to graduate. I wanted to pass and that right. was my main concern. Anything else, just a plus. And so um, I gave him the copy and then about a week, more or less later, he sent me an email and with a picture of him uh, Skyping with the guitar player. Okay. So, and he's, so he's like, I got him the book. He's super excited. Um, he wants to he wants to talk to you, this and that. And I was, and it was late at night. I remember it was like at 2, 3 in the morning. He's like, hopefully you're not reading this because you might not sleep tonight. <laughs> and I didn't. I was super excited. And then, uh, so that's just kind of how that started. And then he sent me the guitar player, Felipe. He sent me an email a couple of days, maybe two days after that. And he said, uh, nice to meet you. I'm 
yeah. Felipe Fernandez Verdes, and he said, I'm going to be playing in Houston in about a month after you graduate. Hopefully we can coincide. And I was like, heck yeah, I'll make it happen. I don't care <laughs> yeah. where I'm at, I'll be there. I'll make it happen. Yes, I'll make it happen. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, I, I went to, the, they were playing at the House of Blues in Houston, mm -hmm. and I took them each a copy of the book. Yeah, that's an awesome venue. I've never it's been really there cool. myself. But it's really cool. Really I've been fun. there. I've seen a couple of people play. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, downtown Houston. Uh, anyway, so I took them each a copy of the book, and that's just kind of how I first met them. And then um, they were super cool. They, you know, they let me go backstage and meet them. He, I, they, I didn't have to pay for my tickets. They were just super nice guys. Yeah, so super awesome. nice guys. It's cool when people you admire don't turn out to be jerks. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. And then uh, I think it was maybe three or four months later, they, they were touring again and they were going to play on their website. It said Brownsville, McAllen, and then wherever else. And so I, but the Brownsville date didn't have a, a venue. It just mm -hmm. said Brownsville and it was empty. McAllen did. Interesting. So I, I, I emailed him and I was like, hey, where are you guys playing in Brownsville? Mm -hmm. Um, so I can buy the tickets, and he said, uh, no, we're not playing in Brownsville, they made a mistake, mm -hmm. we're going to end up playing uh, two nights in McAllen. And so I was like, okay, well, I'll buy tickets from McAllen, I'll see you guys there, peace out. And then he was like, no, 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 don't buy the tickets, I got you, and also bring your guitar. And I was like, what? <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I showed up with my guitar, they were there doing sound check. And it was so cool watching them sound check because they're, they're just musicians. They just like to have fun. Right. You know, they were doing sound check to Zeppelin and Van Halen. And mm -hmm. They were just having Steve Ray Vaughan. You know, they were right. just having a great time. And uh, and then I was, I was just there just like, this is the greatest day of my life. You know? <laughs> just in awe. Yes. <laughs> and um, and then he, he looks around and he's like, Jose, and he's like, come up here. And then so I go, I plug in. They had an amp set up there. And we just... We just jammed, and um, he's like, "Come back tonight. We'll play tonight." And and so we played, and it was amazing. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. And then the next, and then after that, we were just hanging out afterwards in their bus. And he said, "Excuse me." He said, "Tomorrow, come back tomorrow. We'll play again." And I was like, "Of course." So I, I came back, and we played that second night. And I, I've been in touch with them ever since. Whenever they come down. Um, whenever they're around, you know, the whole COVID thing's been kind of right. tough on everybody, musicians mm -hmm. and everybody, whether you're a musician yeah. or not, but especially musicians who make their living, you know, going out and playing mm -hmm. live and stuff like that. Uh, it's been hard, but hopefully they'll be coming back soon, so I'll, I'll get to see them again. But um, yeah, I, I've been keeping in touch with them and it's been awesome. I'm very grateful that I got to jam and meet them for sure amazing that that is that is amazing like what you know what are the odds of like oh you see this band when you're a young kid and, stuff, and then I, like i said full circle because then you the opportunity presented itself where you yeah. know you were able to play with them live not just once twice no i know i know it's crazy <laughs> so, when i think yeah, about it that's that is really awesome so backtracking a little bit mm -hmm. um when did you actually start performing like with bands and you know getting out there in the public um how old about how old high you? school high yeah. school um i had a great guitar teacher in high school he mm. was awesome he um he would have posters of like bach and vivaldi and mm. all these classical guys then he would have on the other side of the classroom steve ray vaughn and yeah. eddie van halen and he was so cool he was very supportive of I mean, we would have to do what we have to do for class. Don't get me wrong. We have to learn our pieces and this and that. But once we got that down, you know, for like we would have recitals at, at the end of Christmas and at the end of the year in May. And he, we would do our, our thing with the class, you know, our pieces, and then he would let us do our own thing. He was very supportive. So he would, you know, there was a, a friend of mine who would do like Del Castillo songs, mm -hmm. you know, at the end or um he would let me play with a, a, a group of friends and we would like play some instrumental music you know on electric guitar so mm -hmm. that was really cool so that's kind of where i started performing in front of people which is really scary yeah at first <laughs> um 
but you just gotta keep doing it. You know, I had a professor later in college who told me it takes around 50 performances more or less to start getting the hang of it. Yeah. Um, so that's how I started. And then, like I told you earlier, I, I mentioned about the Guitar Center thing. Mm -hmm. how I, uh, the, this guy came up to me and he was telling me about a friend that was looking for a guitar player. And that's how I started playing. I was around 17, and I was just so nervous. That first gig, I remember. I didn't move. The whole gig, I was just like this. <laughs> Stiff. <laughs> and my dad was there, and he looks at me. I, I looked at him for a second. I looked up, and he was just like, smile through something. But I was just so nervous. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how it started. And I've been lucky enough to gig ever since. Yeah, that's, that's great. And just, I mean... Being a performer also, I mean, I'm an artist, visual artist, but I've also performed and music has been a big part of my life as well. Um, I can definitely speak to that, the whole nerve scene, getting nervous. Yeah. And because there's been periods, uh, maybe like five years after I started to start performing live right away. Mm -hmm. um, a friend of mine asked me like, hey, do you want to join this? It was like a reggae band, like reggae fusion. What were they called? They were, se llamaban Los Roleros Cosmicos. Roleros Cosmicos, yeah. that's a cool name. Yeah, they were here and then they moved to Austin. So I was with them for a bit doing backup vocals. Mm -hmm. But so yeah, I was like you know, getting my feet wet in these first yes. few performances and this the spot here, what's on the Fraile? That was my first performance with them and I was so nervous. I was like, oh man, I kinda wanted to like just like, you know, melt into the stage and disappear, you know what I mean? So yes, I, do. I do. How do you how I mean do, does that still affect you? Like the nerves or like how do you work through that? Do you just not think about it or you know, is it something that comes more naturally now? Like, yeah. How, how is that? Well, you perform? I, yeah, sometimes I still get nervous. Uh, it depends, I guess, on the show, who I'm playing with, what kind of show it is. Um, but how I get over it is, I had a friend t who told me, this, this was in, back in high school, he said, look, if you make a mistake, 99.9% .9 of the people are not going to notice. But yeah, they will never know. <laughs> Unless they're musicians, yeah. you know, I'm going to notice, he told yes. me, because I'm playing in the band yeah. with you, but nobody's going <laughs> to know, just smile, I meant to do that, keep going. So that really helped. And just preparing, preparing for the yeah. moment, that, that makes you a little more confident, you know, if you do your homework, so to speak. Mm -hmm. That helps a lot. Definitely. So yeah. If you, I mean, if you go unprepared, then you should be nervous because you're about to play in front of a bunch of people, and yeah. and if you're not prepared, well, it's probably gonna suck. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Do your homework, kids. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> so and it's worth it. It's worth it. Oh, when yeah. you have those moments where it's, yeah. it's just everything's clicking and you're sharing the stage with people and people are feeling it, the crowd, the energy, and mm -hmm. all that time you put in, it, it's completely worth it you know what that that is true i mean it's a very special experience because it's a thing and you hear it a lot and you connect with the audience with yes. the people that are present whether it's like a little intimate thing or it's like a huge crowd you know when you have that energy and it's like you know, like you know a mutual thing like a back and forth like you know you're giving your all and then you you see the audience and you feel them getting like amped up like it's just like you know it's just this beautiful, beautiful energy, yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful thing yeah, to so. share the stage with people. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, like, and then your fellow musicians, yeah. you know, of course, you know. So like, I don't know. It's like really, it's very gratifying. And then you get paid yeah. to do it. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Like what? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, oh. that's awesome. So you mentioned you mentioned COVID earlier, and mm -hmm. this is a conversation that I've been having that I know a lot of artists are having right now. What was it like for you? You know, I know it was like extremely difficult you know being a musician how did it, it affect you um were you still uh you know jamming out were you working on anything uh, well it was nobody really knew when it first hit i guess back in march um yeah. just how this thing at least i didn't know how it spread or how bad it was or there was a lot of questions that we still had and the first time it hit me was, I remember, I'm, I'm a huge uh, basketball fan. I love basketball. And then I remembered um, they canceled the season. And I was like, oh my God, this is like serious. serious. This is not a joke. And we stopped rehearsing in person. You know, all my, my friends were just messaging each other. 
but I was very lucky in, in that I also teach music and pretty much almost all my students still wanted to continue and we did it on Zoom. Mm -hmm. So we, we had that. And then as far as projects, um, we, we did live streams, you know, we would do live streams, we would do uh, video collaborations where everybody would kind of record their own parts at home and then we would piece it all together mm -hmm. and just find a way to keep it going. And then, you know, we live in Texas. So eventually we started gigging after a couple months outside. Mm -hmm. We tried to keep it out in the open, you know, wearing right. masks, all that stuff, being taking the precautions. And, but yeah, it was it was tough at first. It was yeah. just trying to figure it all out, like everybody else. Of course, just navigating through this new situation, you know. Yeah, I never thought um, we would go through something like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. In my lifetime. Exactly. And yeah, it's crazy. Like these times that we're living in, it's like so much has happened over this past just I don't know two years. For sure. Year and a half since COVID hit. So um, I did want to ask. Um, you know, just like navigating your way through it, and and now currently you're playing live, and yeah. you know you're. I mean, is it is it better now? Is this way better? better uh, way better. Um, yeah, there's a lot of projects going on. Uh, I have a project tomorrow at Camille Playhouse. My friend who I play in a band with, he's uh, shout out to Steve. Um, he's going out of town. So because of COVID, he couldn't. He got married, I think, in November, December, three months before COVID hit. So mm -hmm. he never went on his honeymoon. Oh. So they're finally going to finally. Hawaii. <laughs> finally, him and his wife. Um, so I, I don't have a gig for the next two weeks, which makes me kind of sad. But um, as soon as he gets back, we have a lot of things planned. Yeah. Yeah, we have things planned that. Broken Sprocket. Mm -hmm. and there's another place that I forget that what it's called, but it's, in, it's like the same thing, but in Harlingen. Um, Wessel, we love playing at Wessel. Yeah, wow, that's such a cool that's venue. A great venue. A lot of artists mm -hmm. there. A lot of just people with the sure. same vibe, you know. Just want to perform and play. Mm -hmm. And downtown to a couple of other places. Um, we did the Rocktoberfest, which was awesome. Yeah, was super I was fun. gonna mention that uh, Jose was actually. One of the perform well, they were the main performers, uh, the headliners for our Rocktoberfest, which took place earlier this month, and that was very amazing. It was you know kids performing from uh, the Brownsville Performing Arts Academy, from Musica Studio, and you know you you actually they got to play with you. I think it was an ACDC song, right? I I, a I songs. sang and yeah, and then he played a few more songs, and then with you were with the Castaways, right? Yes. When you, the the headlining group was the Castaways, and I mean everyone that stuck around, everyone was just blown away. It was it was very cool to see you all just like do your thing, you know what I mean? Because I had never seen you perform live before, and I was just hearing like, oh Jose. He's really cool, amazing guitarist. And I was like, oh, he's super I want, funny. He's super funny. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Thank you so much. No, good. Yeah, of thank course. You, so, so, no, you, you all really brought the energy. So, it's great to hear that you're still, you know, out there and that you always want to just, like, you know, continue performing because it's just what you love doing. Yes, you know? for sure. Yeah. For me, it's all about performing. I mean, that's not entirely true. Mm -hmm. I think. I really enjoy practicing too. It's like a yeah. kind of like a very therapeutic thing for me to just, you know, work on whatever it is, improv or scales or technique or whatever, mm -hmm. because it forces me to have to be present. I think um, I can't be thinking about, oh my God, how am I going to pay my light bill? How am I going to mm -hmm. pay my car? I can't think about that stuff when I'm working on something. So it's, yeah. it, it's just very... I really enjoy practicing, but performing, like you were saying earlier, you know, sharing the stage with your friends, with mm -hmm. other musicians and the crowd, it's, I love performing. I get such a, an adrenaline rush from doing that. I, I love yeah. it so much. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I mean, just what you said right now though, and I'm glad you mentioned it because that's what we do with craft is, you know, we're trying to promote wellness through the arts because we know how important the arts are for people whether they realize it or not but you know just taking simply taking a brush and you know painting something or picking up the guitar I mean, it, even if you've never played 
and you're just barely learning it's like this release you're you're connected with yourself you're in the present moment you know sure. it's like all these uh, things that you know maybe you didn't know that um maybe you needed like maybe you needed that that uh, you know that that cathartic or therapeutic experience so i'm glad that you you know that you know for that. me for me that's that's a big part of why i play mm -hmm. yeah for sure. Yeah, I mean, like, who wants to think about, like, paying bills and, you know, like, yeah. always, all the these day -day stresses. That yeah, anxiety you know. that we all have day to day. Yeah. I mean, everybody's got them. Yeah. But, yeah, that's why, that's a good point that you made. That's why mm -hmm. I, I think everybody should play an instrument because it's, or something in the arts, like you said. Right. Um, something creative. Something creative. I think everyone has it in them. For make. sure. Just, it's just the know. fear that you have. So yeah. Some people get, you know, oh, what if I'm not good enough? What right. if I'm going to judge this and that? Cares about oh, I, I hear all the time like people that you know that know that I draw like oh you you do that or how long have that, you been that drawing? thing you had outside <laughs> that Joker my Joker it's Jack Nicholson Joker I was <laughs> like wow I, I had no idea you did that yeah I thought yeah, you bought I that off I thought it was a picture it looks so yeah I have awesome. it I've been doing Bender stuff again and I have the I drew the Jack Nicholson Joker from the Batman it was like the eighties one yeah so, and yeah people. We'll look at like, oh, is, is that a picture? Like, no, I, well, I did that with colored pencil. <laughs> wow, that was awesome. Yeah, very, very so. cool. But um, yeah, like people see it and they'll they'll say it's like here a lot. Oh, I can't even draw a stick figure. Like, I mean, that's like, art isn't just you know drawing people. Like, yeah, that's been a big part of like art history. And, like, you know, the human figure has been like rendered a lot and. But it's also, there's also different things that you can, like, do you express yourself, there's, you know, expressionism and abstract art and all these different things, collaging, like art is not just one thing and playing music is not just one thing, there's like so many things that you can do with it. You know? And it's a process too. I used yeah. to draw in high school, I wish mm -hmm. I kept up with it, but same thing, I was in, in, draw, in a drawing class from, I think, freshman year to senior year, and same thing, I mean, at first I, I wasn't drawing anything too great but I worked on it and slowly but surely I got I got better at it and I wish I kept up with it I mean you can always pick it yeah back up again. I should I should it's just time yeah yeah there's no, a lot definitely. going on but yeah. yeah but besides you're doing something that you love and that's great yeah um, just to wrap up what would you say to someone uh, that whether it's a young kid or someone our age or a little older and they want to start playing guitar but they're Oh, I don't know. Like, I, what? What if I'm not good at it? Like, you know, what would you say to them to encourage them to to inspire them? To, you know, to just do it. Two things. The first thing, it's not anything deep or anything. It's just very, you know, uh, stretch. Okay. <laughs> I know it sounds <laughs> That's very. That's important. That's important. <laughs> it's super important. Um, like I was telling you, when I started practicing more and taking it more seriously. I wouldn't stretch, I wouldn't warm up, I would just grab my guitar and start working mm -hmm. on difficult passages. And that lasted for like about two, three months, and then I just started getting uh, my carpal tunnel kind oh, of thing. Oh no. And if you can't use your hands, your, I mean, you yeah, can't really play. So, yeah. <laughs> and I've had, unfortunately, um, a couple of guitar-related injuries mm -hmm. um, from just overdoing it and, and stuff like that. So don't overdo it. Sometimes we get super inspired, but just take it easy yeah. and stretch. So that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. Um, the second thing I would say is, and this isn't my idea, this is something that I got from another guitar player, mm -hmm. uh, but it really helped me, and to this day I still, you know, follow that, and that is, I think everybody has something that when they're doing it, there's no fear in it, there's no fear of being judged, there's no fear of failure, it's just something that they really get a lot of enjoyment doing, and if, if you're not born you know, being good at something, then you get good at something along the way. Mm -hmm. And if you can find a way to make a living doing that, you can have a really happy life. Um, and I don't really know anyone, because of success, you know, something that I hear a lot is like, um, okay, until I get all the guitars and all the amps and all the shows mm -hmm. that I'm playing and this and that, then I'll be happy. And it's like, I, I don't really know anyone that's reached, um, you know, in any business or any field that's reached like a high level of uh, success, I guess, in it that doesn't get a great deal of enjoyment doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that would be my, my advice. Find what, and it could be anything. It doesn't have to be playing guitar. Right. It could be cooking. It could be sports. It could yeah. be whatever it is that, that 
really motivates you, um, follow that. Yeah, just find that thing and just go for it. Yeah. Basically. Well, thank you again. Thank you for taking the time today, and I mean, I'm so looking forward to hearing more from you and watching your live performances. I mean, it's always great seeing like musicians put everything you know that they have and like just sharing that with their audience and connecting so thank you so much Jose thank you thank you thank you thank you guys we'll see you again soon